Question 9. India's population is 1.56 billion people. I got that off World Book CIA Bank back wow. book thing. Oh, it's accurate as of today. Okay. Well, today's Indian's population growth rate is at 1.4%. Okay. So. If the population of India in the year 2010 represents the first term, then the second term, 2011, etc. Right. So, assuming the growth rate is constant, write the first three terms. Well, U1, that's the easy one, is 1.15. Six. Let's just assume it's in billions. We don't need to write that. Right. Out. I'll just help a little billions at the beginning here. Billion. Bill. Okay. You two. Well, how do I going to get one point one five six? And I'm going to multiply it by the growth rate. One point zero one four. Or is that one point one four? What's the difference, Miss Flynn? Hmm. One point one four would actually be. Oh, that's 14%. 14%. I want 1.4%, so it's not growing very much. So when I multiply those together, what do I get for that term? Mm, we get, let's see, if we round to three significant figures. Oh, good. I like that. 1.17. Okay. Now you three, I'm going to take 1.156 and multiply it. Well, that's how much it was in year two. I need to multiply by 1.014 a second time, which will be squared, which will end up being... 1.19, three significant figures. One, nine to three sig figs, four billions of people. Okay, so there's a part done, the first three terms. It's kind of nice to do the first three terms because then you get an idea of what this pattern is doing. So the general term is easy from there. All right, so UN. It's geometric. Mm -hmm. So we start with U1, which we already know, 1.156. And mm -hmm. our ratio is 1.014 to the power of N, N minus N 1. 1. All right, that was easy. Yes, we're already plug in. on number C. All right, there's a, one easy point. Okay, let me extend the page a little bit. And Mm -hmm. All right, letter C says, in what year will Indian's population reach 1.5 billion people? Stop. Okay, here we go. Reach 1.5 billion people. Hmm. So I want to find N to do that. So if I want it to be 1.5, I'm going to UN be 1.5, and I'm going to let it equal to the general equation. 1.01. Four to the n minus one. Uh oh. Okay, let's get rid of that one point one five six. Okay, so I'm gonna divide both sides by one point one five six. And one point two nine seven six. I'm gonna keep all those decimals because the significant figures has to be for the final answer, so I gotta keep all my accuracy for a little while yet to the n minus 1. What happens when we have a variable as an exponent? How oh. do we get? Uh, I know this one. This is the, they, I'm going to say a bad word that people are not going to like, logarithms. We have to take a log of both sides. Yes, we do. So log of 1 point, does it have to be log or can I use the natural logarithm, ln? Oh, I believe it has to be log. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think we could also use any base we wanted to. We could do natural log if we wanted to, but okay. we usually always do regular log. Oh, what am I doing? I'm talking and I'm not paying attention. Right? We usually just use regular logarithm because base 10 is our favorite base. I'm jumping ahead a step here. Let's go back to my pen. And so in log, the whole right-hand side of the equation. Four, ooh, n minus 1. Now, a little trick with logarithms, this exponent pops right down here. So I can say log 1.2976 equal to n minus 1, parenthesis, log 1.014. Okay. 
Now it's easy to solve for All n. Right. Now I solve for n. So there's two ways we could do this. We could divide by log 0.1014, or we can distribute it. Which one would you like to do this time? Hmm. I was thinking the easy way. Okay. I'd like to divide the logs, get rid of them. Yeah. So I'm going to divide by log 1.014, divide log 1.014. And so when I do this calculation here, what does that equal? Some ugly decimal? 18.738. Mm -hmm. Which is equal to n minus 1. We're not done. Don't forget the minus 1. All right. got to add the 1. So n is then 19.7. That's, that's the three sig figs right here. Uh, this That's is, not our answer, though. No, this is the part of the question I always hate because I have to try and make that into a year, and I get so confused about which year is which. So if year one represents 2010, year 19, i got to count 19 years. Well, if I did year three, just let's just do this, it would be 2012. That's year three because it's always one less. So 19, year 19 is going to be 20, 28. 20, oh, eight, right, because you've got an extra 10. So in the year 2028, that will, 19.7 will happen in this year, probably around September. Can we 20, check our work? I don't know if I believe that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> how, would you, how would you like to check that, Miss Flynn? <laughs> Let's see, what if we put that in for Ah, if we put it in. If we put 19 in. 19. So it's going to be, or we could do 19.7, and that would tell us. Make sure that we get up above. Up above. Or up above would be year 20, and would be 20. That would be above. 19 would be below. So we could look at the table. We could look at a table. Oh, here's a great idea. If we go over here, and my calculator is turned on somewhere, okay? Let's take a look at this. If I go to here and I put in well, 1.156. One billion people times my growth rate to the power of n minus 1. Am I doing this right? Yeah, so far so good. No. Oh, oh that's minus 18. No. Delete. Delete. All right. Let's go to my table of values, and then we can see what's going on. So in year one, there is 11. Yep, that's right. And I can go down here and check. When do we reach 1.5? Oh, there we go. Right between the two. Between 19 and 20, it happens. Looks like we're right. All right. So we are year 20, 28. That was a hard one. Sign on. All right.